What's going on, guys? It's Brian bringing you another great episode of Brian's Beverage Corner. And today I bring in a newcomer on the show, <laughs> my friend Mendoza from yeah. work. She's a huge beer connoisseur just like myself. And she's been making fun of me for the past <laughs> couple months about my drink preferences. So I got stuff that I think she'll really like. And we're going to we're gonna see if I can, we're going to see if I got out. it. Yeah, we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so what beers are you normally into or what do you drink on a regular basis? On a regular basis? It's IPA, for sure. I got into IPA through Goose Island. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, from yeah. New York. Yeah, so um, at first it was always wheat beers. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I don't know what, just IPA is like that uh, bitter taste, which I'm, I'm usually like the salty type, spicy type snacks. Yeah. So it fits perfectly with those snacks. Okay. So, um, but my go-to on a regular basis is IPA. Yeah. Well, I've picked three different styles of IPAs for you. So we're doing a, a place called uh, Burning Beard Brewing Company. They're out of El Cajon, uh, California, which is in the San Diego area. It's actually like, their brewery I think is like 20 minutes from my house. Their logo is like super cool. They got these like little yeah. like, skull with like, like the them. hot beard and everything. I just thought it was really nice. So I picked up a bunch of stuff. So we have a West Coast IPA, a hazy IPA, which is more like a East, like Northeast style IPA, mm -hmm. and then a double hazy IPA. So we're gonna see if, from someone who's an IPA <laughs> expert here, a connoisseur, a connoisseur yeah. we're gonna see if these beers meet up to your standards Sweet. today, okay. and we're gonna rate them. So they're wet. They they've only been around since 2015. So there wasn't much on the website about them. They they actually give a lot of information about like why they started and stuff like that. And it was just basically like a lot of people, friends that came together that have a you know mutual love for the craft, taking their idea to fruition, creating a brewery. Like I said, they they've only been around for like six years. So they're super fresh, oh. but their stuff, at least the can art, looks amazing. I like this one the most. Yeah, the this is the burning beer, the new damage. I also think their like style is cool too. I kind of yeah. like the first two cans are almost remind me of like that like Bioshock style. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then this one just goes like full out like biker style. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Like some Sons of Anarchy stuff on this one. Yeah, because this one reminds me of the the helmet that I was trying to get, but. I ended up just getting with the, the Harley Davidson all matte black, whatever. Okay. But, um, like my Hydro Flask. Oh, the, the, the one that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why that color has been like standing out to me lately, but that's why I like this one most. So let's, let's get into it. So we'll start with this first one, Dankness Visible West Coast IPA. For those of you that don't know, the difference between like an East Coast style and a West Coast style is the hops that they use in it. And like the way that they make it, it brings out like different factors of flavor mm -hmm. for lack of a better term mm -hmm. west coast ipas tend to bring out more of like the bitterness whereas east coast ipas especially like ones like this like that hazy style will be more like aimed at the citrus and other yeah. like f more fruit mm -hmm. like fruity yeah. kind of hoppy ish hoppy ish aspects yeah so this one came in at 6.5 percent like i said they're fairly new so even the ratings were very slim to none uh -huh. so we're gonna rate them today you have a yeah, uh, on, an, on, an, on an angle. Okay, okay. Don't get me wrong. I've I've screwed up from talking a lot, so don't judge me. Have you? Did you even bother reading the back too, or do you just choose them by the how it looked? I always choose. So last week we did Great Notion, and we did it by the the can art. So I didn't okay. read anything until the end. So oh, this one. So now that you say something, because yeah. they are are they different or are they the same thing? Oh. Oh, it's just a story. Because they're all the same. Oh, okay, got it. But it says in the back, uh, we're an inspired bunch enkindled by punk rock, fine literature, beautiful artwork, nature, solitude, and expertly crafted beers. And the beard is our is our metaphor. We enjoy it. Am I reading this right? <laughs> and the beard is our metaphor. We enjoy it here at the confluence of creativity and craft and think you will too. So raise a glass, dear friends. And sound your barbaric yarp. Yop. <laughs> yarp? That's yop. There's no R yarp. in it. <laughs> yop. Over the rooftops. And then it says, up the beard. <laughs> where's Where's Jessen when you need him? I wish he was here today. He would love that. I, I told him, I, I kind of wanted to make him like the picture for the thumbnail. Uh -huh. to, but his beard, but he trimmed his beard. So now it's not, oh, as, not, not, it's not as full yeah. as it used to be. So here we are. So. 
there it is nothing crazy on the color i mean it, these are all ipa so none of these should be a crazy color yeah. um so this is the standard beer color actually pretty clear i like it i like the color i like the pre presentation of it i'm just watching the bubbles go up now yeah yours is going crazy right now mine's already i think yours settled yeah, a little yeah, bit it's already good to go. so let's cheers it up let's taste this oh it's nice i like it a lot yeah it's, it's more earthy yeah it's not it's not very hoppy mm -mm. but it's smooth yeah so like i said 6.5 percent that's the lowest we're going to today i think the highest is eight eight or 8.5 yeah 8.5 so it's like 6.5 7 and 8. it kind of doesn't taste like an ipa it's very earthy but it's almost it's like um not, not like an amber it tastes like an ale to me yeah like a darker ale style mm -hmm. but light yeah it's good though. I Which can is, see. Yeah. I can see this with. I could eat, drink, eat, drink this with dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of food. We're already. It's <laughs> and I was, thing, there's no snack here. It's very good. I actually enjoy this a lot. I'm not usually into the West Coast style IPAs, but this one's really, really nice. Um, besides. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll... <laughs> next. On to the next one. <laughs> Next one we have is the New Damage, their regular hazy IPA. I like that. Can you pass me those yeah. paper towels? Just so I, we can... I think this beer I would have if like, if it's just a chill night. You're not trying to get fucked up. You're just yeah. enjoying, you know, the conversation type of thing. There's not, there hasn't been many beers on the show that we've done where I can honestly say like, I would drink this as a quantity beer. Like these are all quality. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get you. I try to keep it a little bit to the... You know, like the more elegant style of beers. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, Although, just... it's, yeah, right. <laughs> I gotta get one of those, like a sniffer and just. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you ever uh, smell the beers too before you drink them? Or you just... I usually do, but um, before I before I taste it because uh. sometimes like we'll talk about the aroma. Like this one, we'll talk about the color and everything because hazy is gonna come out a lot lighter. More that straw color is gonna come out, but it's not gonna taste like a wheat beer or like a like a hefeweizen or anything so it looks so cloudy hazy it says on the can yeah so this one i can already smell so, the difference yeah so where that one had more it that one had hop notes on the aroma but not in the flavor this one doesn't have like crazy like a suit like a high amount of aroma to yeah. it it's very light in aroma so I'm gonna assume the taste is gonna be similar, and it's gonna come out more of that like like I'm gonna I'm gonna feel really weird if like this goes from <laughs> if I say wrong. citrusy and I'm completely wrong. wrong. <laughs> That's why I'm not saying shit. I'm just like, can we just drink it already? Yeah, drink it. Just go for it. Oh, it's good. At least I was right. Yeah, there's actually a citrus. There is a, there, there is a hint of citrus yeah. citrus in there. I don't I can't pinpoint like what type unless they use like citra hops, which is gonna give it that that flavor, but. I like this one. I actually like this one better. Mm -hmm. This one comes in, I believe it's 7%. Yeah. This one's 7% flat. The new damage. It's my favorite. I like this one so far. Yeah. A lot of the places like back home, back on the East Coast, this style is like what a lot of people go for. Oh, okay. Very few beer drinkers in New Jersey, at least from my clientele when I worked in the industry, mm -hmm. would go for West Coast styles. The only one they would go for was one by Rogue. And it was called Straight Out of Newport. Okay, I'm not sure though. It's pretty good. I yeah. I liked it. The art was like all the brewers in the style of the Straight Out of Compton album nice. from NWA. Nice. It was cool. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Have you tried making your own beer before? Uh, I see. Everyone asks me that. No, I have not no? actually. There's no. There's one in San Diego in Mission Gorge to be able to like brew your own beer. I should go. Yeah, I think like. And for, we'll bring the camera. Cause yeah. <laughs> I've done it before for my birthday. It was for like two people, a, a full keg uh, for like 300 bucks. That's so worth it. And you that. get to like try to put, put your own like hops into it and everything, whether it's wheat, IPA, stout, anything. My dad was going to get me like a set for my birthday, but then he was like afraid that I would enjoy it too much. And then he wouldn't know how to get like a resupply of the material. Oh, so he was, he was like, not that I don't love you or anything. It's just that like, I was afraid <laughs> that, you, that, <laughs> that you'd use it too much. And then I wouldn't be able to get you the supplies in the back end. Oh, okay. And I was like, all right, fair enough, Dan. Like, thanks for the, the thanks thought. for the thought though. Yeah, the thought that, that counts. Yeah. So we're on the brain box pollution. What? I swear to God, I'm not joking. 
I don't know if that sounds more dangerous or just. Yeah, I was gonna like say nasty. that name. That name doesn't sound like yeah. drawing. But so this is the same style as this one, but yeah. a double IPA. So it'll be a little bit. I believe it should be a little harsher, and it's and and it is stronger. It's at eight point five percent. And we've come to notice that like a lot of the beers, at least like for people that don't drink beer often, mm -hmm. have been learning that um, the higher the ABV, the less like bubbly it gets. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, why is there no bubbles? It's like, well, they're there. It's just it's not as yeah. pronounced. Pronounced. I said, wait till you try something that's like. 13 14 percent and that thing looks like juice so same color and everything does it smell the same um slightly it smells more like grapefruit or something yeah or see this one does have a more prominent smell yeah. to it so i wonder if the taste is gonna match it is it just me or does that taste like more juicy no <laughs> yeah dude what the fuck Brain box pollution definitely fits the taste of this. This beer. tastes like juice to me. I think that's why I don't like it. It tastes like grapefruit juice. This one's definitely more not like a beer. Mm -hmm. I, I would not. But for eight point five percent, I mean that's. Well, it's not even. It's not even bitter. It's not even. Yeah, I know. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. Like for someone that doesn't drink like a lot of IPAs and stuff, this is like a dangerous game right here. For people. Oh, I see that. My favorite's still this, the, the, the new damage. Yeah. I don't know, like, it's it's kind of weird, because it, it was the opposite of what I was expecting. I was expecting more of, like, harsh, more bitter. Yeah. Like, a fuller flavor of the new damage. And this thing tastes more like what you said, like grapefruit juice. Yeah. I don't I, even, the smell is not even, it doesn't meet up to the standards of that, nor to a double IPA, nonetheless. It doesn't taste like a double IPA. Mm -mm. I mean, I liked all three of them. I This one's my favorite. So if you were to go again, you would be like, yeah, yeah, let me get... New damage. No. Oh, oh like if yeah. I were to go and get like a flight... You'd be down to drink these again. Yeah, I would, I would get these again. This one. I would, if I had to pick one, I'd pick the new damage. I believe that the brain box pollution, a little misleading because it's set. But I mean, does it say anything specific? Our hoppiest hazy to date. Rainbox pollution is packed with citra, amar amarillo, and cryogenic cashmere hops for a mind-bending explosion of tropical fruit flavor accompanied by an intoxicating smooth mouthfeel and rock and roll finish. Wait, um, definitely tropical fruit flavor. Yeah. Um, I don't know about hoppy. Yeah, it is not hoppy. Does this one have anything specific no, it to it? Say this one doesn't say anything. I think it's because I think it's because this one must be a lot newer. So this one was actually significantly more expensive than the other ones too. Oh, these so it wasn't worth the these were so these were <laughs> these were five dollars a can, and this one I think was seven. Holy shit! This was seven dollars for this one beer. That is. I mean, not worth it. <laughs> I would a. I don't know. I would. I mean. I'll drink some more. I'll yeah. drink it if you don't like well, it. Well, because only because. Oh yeah, I can see the little price tag there. Um, yeah, I'll take them off. Unfortunately. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how much they cost, so I just leave them on till the end of the show. <laughs> maybe it's the. I want to give it the benefit of the doubt that maybe because we were transitioning the beers that this last one was that the like the not that part of the stick, and that's why we can't taste it fully. But that whole tropical flavor hops. I don't the taste. Hops is I don't taste hops. The hops is the vibe. Unless that combination just adds to the flavor, like they just picked three different styles that are very light on the flavor, and the fruit took over. I don't know, but I believe this new damage though. This is the home run for me. Yeah. Like I would three. be able to finish these two right now. One or the other. Not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> but this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna oh, drink that no. one. Yeah, I'm gonna, there's no way where somebody's like, oh, you want another one? No, I'll pass. <laughs> Thanks. So as far as ratings go for these beers, out of five? Out of five. Out of five for the three of them. Okay. Um, this one was my favorite. I would put this at like a 4-1. I think for a hazy IPA, this is done very well. There's a lot of flavor to it. There's a lot I could talk to uh, talk about the beer. And overall, I could see myself buying a full like four or six pack of this yeah, in the future. Sure. Yeah. 
the dankness visible. I would do like a three eight. I thought for a West Coast IPA, this is better than what I normally what I've normally seen in the past. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy the earthiness flavor that I got mm -hmm. from it. It does. T it, it is kind of weird because it comes out like a regular like beer, yeah. but tastes like an amber ale style. Mm -hmm. So I but still done very well. And then um, for the brain box pollution. I'm really curious on what you can rate it. See, I like it, so that's why I'm still drinking it. But at the same time, you like your input is what's giving me the rating, I think, of like a 3-4. Like okay. it's good, but there's a lot that could have been done to make it better. I think it's a good beer, but it could be better. Yeah. And that's the thing, I because I'm not one to have like the tropical fruited IPAs. Yeah. So I don't want to judge it based off my biased opinion because I don't have those type of IPAs. But at the same time, if it's gonna be an IPA, you gotta have it at least that type of like bitterness hitting your tongue type so of that, like So that so that's why I gave it a three four because I believe for a double IPA, like a lot of people that buy double IPAs want the hoppiness in it. Yeah. They want that bitter flavor and this is almost like juice. I mean not like a fruity like no. It, this is not like a sour it's anything, like a by carbonated, the way. It's like a carbonated juice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minus the tartness, because it's not tart either. Overall, I think their brewery is great. I think their presentation is what gives it to them, because... Beautiful presentation. Their cans caught my eye. Thank God the uh, South Bay put all their products in the same row, because th sometimes, like, if they have too much of one brewery, it, like, spans across different rows. And then like you miss certain things because I feel like when I saw them like together, the first thing I noticed was the green one actually. Oh, okay. The green one caught my eye and then I saw this one next to it and I was like, I like your cut, G. You know, I like your style. <laughs> I had to. I like the style of it. And then um, I was looking for a third can just to do the show. And then um, I saw this one and I was like, this one's mysterious and also the most like alcoholic out of all of them, so I have to buy it. And it's a double IPA, hazy double IPA. So I had to. Yeah. But, what did you, so what did you think overall? I would for sure get these again, but that one is- Not your style. Just, it's, yeah, to nicely put it, that's just not my style. This one for some reason tastes like an, an ale, it doesn't taste like an IPA, but I would still kind of chill on, on the beer. Yeah. And then this one, to me it's, Almost like a perfect IPA because it meets my standards as a, what an IPA would be. And then that one is just like carbonated juice. <laughs> this, uh, this is why I brought. This is me. why I brought you on the show. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. I, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you coming out. Which is super exciting because I would. I never thought even to do such a thing because back before my current job, it's mm -hmm. the fact that I would want. I would go jumping to brewery, brewery, trying to figure out which one would be my favorite, good, bad, so, you know, rating, up, down, and then uh, as well as the idea of eventually investing in a brewery. Yeah. Which would be awesome. Um, but in any case, because now this current job just took away, and COVID, thanks yeah. to COVID, um, <laughs> is that I it totally, the hobby went totally down, like, downhill. So to be able to go on the show and try these new different beers, so exciting. Yeah, I actually, so I changed the way I did the show a while ago. Um, I used to pick just random beers, like from all different breweries and uh -huh. just rate what, just based on what I, what I, what the cans looked like. And I just, they didn't all have to be from the same brewery. Now I, I feel like doing these brewery spotlights are nice, but um, in the recent episodes and um, if you want, if you, if you're someone that consistently watches my show, you're probably thinking the same thing. Like, oh, why does he keep not talking about the breweries as much? That's because recently I picked a lot of new places and they don't have a lot of information to give mm -hmm. online. So I have to go based on people, other people's mm -hmm. opinions, which I don't want to do. So I give my own opinion, which is why I talk a little bit about the brewery and more about the actual beer mm -hmm. itself. Nice. Maybe if you're interested in doing more shows, we'll go back to the old way for one show. Mm -hmm. I always do it when I go home. When I go back to New Jersey, I always wind up doing the rando episodes. Oh. We, go, we go to Total Wine. Oh. I pick three or four beers randomly. And then we just review them. Oh, nice. Out here, I tend to be a little bit more structured because Matt, uh, Matt takes the show seriously as well. Uh, even though he wears sunglasses every episode now. 
in disguise or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but it's nice. So maybe we'll do another random episode out here, see what we get. Or like we'll have a couple people on, and everyone picks one beer to bring to the sh- to bring to the show. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then I feel like maybe somebody's like. For example, if there's like a, a group of people and they just bring their favorite beer and then you just pour it for everybody else to like kind of rate their favorite beer. Yeah. That'd be kind of fucking cool too. We could totally do that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, I think so because it's my idea. So. Well. <laughs> Mendoza, thank you so much oh, for being course. on the show thank again, you. guys. Appreciate it. Now remember, guys, the weekend's coming up. So I always promote safe drinking. Always have a plan. Always have a DD if you need it. I'm Brian. This is my friend Mendoza, Mendoza. Hmm. and that has been another episode of Brian's Beverage Corner. Have a great day, everyone.